Mark sat across from his soon-to-be ex-wife, Lisa, and his former best friend, Greg. The room was thick with tension, as though all the air had been sucked out and replaced with the suffocating weight of betrayal. He stared at the two people he had trusted most in the world, and now, they sat across from him, broken and vulnerable. He had spent 25 years married to Lisa, building a life, raising children, and forging what he thought was an unbreakable bond. He had known Greg for 23 years, longer than he had known his own kids, trusted him with everything. But that trust was shattered when he discovered their affair. Greg was pale, visibly shaking as he spoke. Mark, please, you don't need the gun. We can talk this out. There's no need for this. I'm not going to hurt you. Mark glanced down at the Glock 45 resting on the armrest of his chair. His finger casually grazed the trigger, but his grip was steady, controlled. The gun wasn't here to cause chaos, only to keep things calm, to keep them in check. He smirked at Greg's desperate plea. Greg, you're about 60 pounds heavier than me, and you've got a few inches in height. I've seen the photos of you and your Navy SEAL buddies. You could snap my neck in seconds. So no, I think we'll sit here quietly until Emily gets back. She's dropping the kids off at practice and should be here at any moment. Lisa, her face flushed with panic, tried to intervene. Mark, this is all a misunderstanding. You don't know what's really happening. You need to stop this now. Mark's eyes darkened as he looked at her, the woman he had once loved with every fiber of his being. What will you do if I don't, Lisa? Get up and try to explain? Go ahead. But if you move, I'll start shooting. He lifted the gun just slightly, enough to make his point clear. If Greg moves, I'll start shooting too. So why don't we all just sit here and wait? Greg and Lisa froze, eyes wide with shock. They knew Mark wasn't bluffing. There was no doubt in their minds that he would follow through on his threat if they made a wrong move. The silence in the room was oppressive, hanging over them like a storm cloud waiting to burst. Mark leaned back in his chair, the weight of the last few months pressing down on him as memories flooded his mind. He remembered better days, days when everything seemed simple, normal. The days before that fateful moment that set all of this in motion. It had been a warm summer afternoon, and they were all at a barbecue, just like they had been many times before. The sun was shining, the smell of grilling meat filled the air, and laughter echoed across the yard. Lisa had come over to him and Greg with a playful smile on her face, holding two cold beers. For my husband's, she had said with a laugh. Mark had found it funny at the time. He had spit out some beer through his nose, and Greg had just grinned, amused by the joke. What do you mean by that? Mark had asked, still laughing. I've got three husbands, Lisa had replied, giggling. One at work, one at the auto shop, and then the one I really love. Mark, that's you. She had leaned in and kissed him deeply, her tongue slipping into his mouth with a passion she hadn't shown in years. At the time, Mark had dismissed it as harmless fun, but something about that moment had stuck with him. For the next few months, that seemingly innocent comment had gnawed at him, sinking deeper and deeper into his thoughts. He tried to shake it off, but something felt wrong. He couldn't pinpoint why, but a small, nagging voice in the back of his mind kept telling him to pay closer attention. So he started watching them, Lisa and Greg. At first, everything seemed normal. They didn't act any differently around each other. There were no lingering looks, no secretive conversations. But that only made Mark more suspicious. He began digging. First, he checked their home security system. The cameras had been in place for years, and he combed through hours of footage. He even checked the logs stored in the cloud, looking for any signs of infidelity, any stolen moments that might have slipped past him. But nothing. They never left the house together, never seemed to meet in secret. It was as if they had always maintained the perfect illusion of innocence. Mark wasn't satisfied. He began pulling old credit card receipts, going back years. He scarred through phone records, Lisa's emails, everything he could get his hands on. Still, nothing. They both worked in government offices, where CCTV cameras were everywhere, so it was nearly impossible for them to meet without being recorded. 
It seemed like they were only together when they had legitimate reasons, rides to work, occasional family gatherings, but that gnawing feeling wouldn't go away. It wasn't until six weeks ago that Mark noticed something that turned his world upside down. He was standing by the front door, watching his oldest son, Jake, and Greg as they walked down the street together. From behind, they had the same build, the same posture. A chill ran down Mark's spine. Could it be? He quickly dismissed the thought as ridiculous, but the more he watched, the more the similarities became too obvious to ignore. That night, Mark went online and ordered DNA test kits for all three of his children, Jake, Ryan, and little Sarah. He didn't tell Lisa. He wanted the results to be a surprise, a birthday present for her. And today, that day had finally come. As Mark sat in the living room with Greg and Lisa, he reached into his pocket and pulled out three plain envelopes, tossing them onto the coffee table in front of them. Surprise, Lisa. Happy birthday, Mark said coldly. Why don't you and Greg go ahead and open these? It's a little gift I've been planning for months. Lisa's hand trembled as she reached for the envelope. Greg, still dazed, picked his up and tore it open with shaky fingers. As he stared at the DNA results inside, his face turned white and he quickly bent over, vomiting into a nearby trash can. Lisa opened hers and gasped, her eyes filling with tears as she read the results. She looked up at Mark, horror and guilt etched across her face. Mark, I'm so sorry. I never meant for this to happen. I thought they were yours. I just, I must have miscalculated the timing. Please, Mark, you have to believe me, she sobbed, her voice cracking with desperation. Greg, who had been frozen in shock, finally found his voice. Mark, she promised me she was careful. I never meant to do this to you. You're my best friend. He stammered, his face as pale as a ghost. Mark let out a low, bitter laugh. Best friend? I don't think so. You're nothing but a liar. You both enjoyed making fools out of me and Emily, didn't you? But don't worry. I'm not going to shoot you. I've already set everything in motion. We're getting divorced, Lisa. I've already taken half of everything we own and put it in a separate account. The kids' college funds are safe. I've paid off all our joint credit accounts, and I've rented an apartment across the city. Far away from both of you. Lisa's sobs grew louder. Mark, please, don't do this. I love you. I've always loved you. This was a mistake. I didn't mean to hurt you. Mark shook his head, his eyes hard and unforgiving. Love? Don't kid yourself, Lisa. You don't love me. You never did. You destroyed everything. The kids know the truth. Jake told me he's moving in with me after he finishes school. Sarah won't even talk to you. Greg buried his face in his hands, tears streaming down his cheeks. Mark, I'm begging you. Please don't tell my family. Oh, I already did, Mark replied with a wicked grin. And I told your Navy SEAL buddies, too. They know everything. How you betrayed me, how you've been screwing my wife behind my back for God knows how long. They're not too happy with you, Greg. You're persona non grata now. A knock at the door broke the tense silence. A man in a suit stepped into the room, holding a few papers. Mr. Greg Watson. Greg nodded weakly. You've been served, the man said, handing Greg a legal document. He then turned to Lisa, Mrs. Lisa Turner. Lisa didn't respond, too overcome with emotion to speak. The man placed an envelope on her lap and snapped a quick photo. You've been served, he repeated before turning and leaving the room. Mark smiled darkly. Well, that's that. Greg, you've got two hours to pack your things and get out. Lisa, I suggest you go away for the weekend. By the time you get back, I'll be long gone. Greg, still in shock, looked up at Mark with confusion in his eyes. How did you, how did you figure it out? Mark shrugged, leaning back in his chair. It doesn't matter anymore. You want to know how long I've known? Since that day at the barbecue when Lisa joked about having three husbands. That's when it all started falling into place. Mark continued watching as Lisa and Greg squirmed under the weight of their guilt. But the joke wasn't funny anymore. I started paying attention. I checked security footage, phone records, credit card receipts. I dug through years of archives and found nothing. That's what was killing me. There was nothing. 
but you, Greg, and Lisa, thinking you could outsmart me. That's what did it. Greg slumped back in his chair, defeated. We thought, we thought we were careful, he mumbled, almost to himself. It was only in the car, on the way to and from work. We didn't go anywhere else. No hotels, no secret getaways. Just stress relief. Mark shook his head, a mix of disgust and pity on his face. In the car, huh? For years, my so-called best friend and my wife carried on right under my nose, just driving to work. I suppose I should be grateful. No big romantic getaways or hotel receipts to find. No meetings at odd hours. Just two people betraying me in the most mundane way possible. Lisa was sobbing now, her hands covering her face as her shoulders heaved. I never meant for it to go this far, Mark. I swear. I thought they were yours. I miscalculated. I made a mistake. Miscalculated? Mark's voice was cold, every word sharper than the last. You didn't miscalculate anything, Lisa. You destroyed our family. I told the kids, and they're not on your side. Sarah won't even talk to you. Jake is moving in with me as soon as he graduates. You've lost everything. Lisa fell silent, her sobs fading into the background as the reality of her situation sank in. Greg wiped tears from his face, looking more broken than Mark had ever seen him. The man who had once been strong, capable, his Navy SEAL friend, was reduced to a pitiful, weeping mess. Mark stood up, finally feeling the weight of the situation begin to lift off his shoulders. You two are going to live with the consequences of what you've done. I've already filed for divorce. I'm keeping half of everything, and the kids' futures are secure. As for the rest of your lives, well, that's up to you. Lisa reached out, her voice barely a whisper. Mark, please. I still love you. Can't we? Can't we fix this? Mark laughed bitterly, shaking his head. Love? Lisa, you don't even know what love is. If you loved me, you wouldn't have done any of this. You would have respected our marriage, our family. But it's too late for that now. He turned to leave, his back to the two people who had betrayed him. I hope you both enjoyed it what's left of your lives. Because I'm done with both of you. Goodbye. With that, Mark walked out the door, not looking back. He was free now, free from the lies, the deceit, and the pain that had consumed him for so long. He had a new life waiting for him on the other side of the city, far away from the wreckage of his old one. And as he stepped into the sunlight, he finally felt a sense of peace. Back in the house, Greg and Lisa sat in stunned silence, their lives unraveling before their eyes. What had begun as a secret, a reckless indulgence, had now destroyed everything they had ever known. And now, they were left to pick up the pieces. Lisa wiped her tears, her voice barely audible. What do we do now? Greg looked at her, his face hollow and empty. I don't know. I really don't know. The sound of the front door closing behind Mark echoed through the house, sealing their fates. They had been caught in the web of their own deceit. And now, there was no escaping the consequences. Mark, for the first time in months, allowed himself a small smile as he drove away. The pain was still there, but it was fading, replaced by something stronger, hope. He would rebuild. He would find a new beginning. And as for Lisa and Greg, they would live with the choices they had made. Because in the end, no secret could stay hidden forever. And now that the truth was out, it had destroyed everything in its wake. But Mark, he was free. And that was all that mattered.